Hello everybody, getting set up for weather class today. Welcome everyone, meteorologist Hutch Johnson getting set up for today's weather school, weather class. And today's topic is talking about temperatures and how we observe and measure them and how important it is to make sure that they're accurate. So we'll talk about how we do that coming up here in just a moment. Hey, Maureen. Shane and Weston are back. Good to have both of you. Remember, as you sign in today, to uh, go ahead and uh, comment with who you are, where you're watching from. Uh, we've had people watching our class or Hutch's class here from Florida, from Alabama. We've had people in Germany. We've had people in Idaho. So welcome to everybody. Uh, Nathan, good to see you back. Hi, Kimberly. Good to have you on board as well. I got a thermometer behind me as a prop. We're going to talk about temperatures today. Um, as chief meteorologist at Valley News Live, one of the things people tune in to watch for is temperature information. And sometimes we take for granted what it is we're measuring. So we're going to talk about how we do that carefully. Elizabeth and Rozo, hi. Caleb and Lola and Parker, good to have you on board as well. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing uh, folks joining in. West Fargo, Elliot and Julian joining and Alex. Hey, I hope um, your remote uh, learning, distance learning, we're calling it, is going well, uh, kids. Many of you, I know my kids, uh, logging in, getting used to a new workflow, a new way of doing things. Uh, and here at the television station, we're doing something similar. Uh, we're remote weather casting. So if you watch Hutch tonight on Valley News Live, you'll see me broadcast from my home. And uh, we have set up remotely just like you are so that we can also practice social distancing. The fewer people that we have gather in our workplace and business means the less chance of spreading. So uh, I am not sick if you see me and thanks for asking. Uh, Troy, good to have you on board from Cavalier Go Tornadoes. Hi, Troy. Welcome aboard. Hi, Jocelyn. Good to have you as well. Madeline uh, in Purim, good to have you. Uh, finally, some sunshine today, and it felt good. And one of the reasons the sunshine felt good is because of the temperature. I think we got a good number of folks on board. Uh, also, I will remind you right now that if you think that you have a cousin who lives across a different part of the country, hi, Douglas, uh, and you think they might enjoy this class, Barb or Jessica from Detroit Lakes, then I want you to tag them in the comment section below. Go ahead and tag them down there and they too can log on and join the class. Now I'm looking on my uh, Facebook feed here to see if I can uh, uh, watch as your comments come in. So that's the last little piece of setting up that I have to do and we will get started with today's class. Don't worry, they only last about a half hour. I leave uh, options for questions for you. Hi, Ad Allison, good to have you on board again as well. Hi, Lori, good to have you uh, on board. Um, so I do save some time for questions and appreciate any questions that I do get from you. So please give me a thumbs up, a big smiley face if we're talking about something fun or if you enjoy the class. And uh, we'll have some uh, Q&A time uh, at the end. Let's get started. First and foremost, uh, again, we're looking at the tower cam this morning. And finally, the pesky clouds that have been slamming us with snow have left, at least Fargo. Now, there's still a few clouds in our northern and eastern counties. Lengby, Thomas, good to have you. Wendell and Bagley's watching. Hi, Wendell. Good to have you on board. Uh, throw me a thumbs up or a like if you like what's going on here. Tracy, good to see you as well. Uh, Park Rapids, Lori, good to have you on board from beautiful central Minnesota. All right, let's take a look at that sun. Now, we did talk about heat in one of our previous classes, but I want to do just a brief review about that. First and foremost, our area today, very quiet. We have snow in Omaha, Nebraska. Can you believe that? From Denver to eastern and central parts of Nebraska, it's snowing like wild. And in Kansas and Missouri, they have showers and thunderstorms. But we are quieter today. Now, we do have a few snow showers up here south of Winnipeg. That's the kind of stuff we've had every day. 
quick passing showers of snow. Those are mainly up in Canada today and might hit our northernmost communities as we go through the afternoon. Hi, Doug. Good to have you on board. Brenda, good to have you from Ada. Sunshine feels good, doesn't it? Oh, hi, uh, Joe and Lucy from uh, um, Edinburgh. Good to have you. All right, let's talk temperature. Um, First and foremost, we reviewed a little bit about sunshine, and today we've got a lot of sunshine up there. Hi, Doug. Good to have you on board. I'm going to give you a wave there. Um, Yeah, we got the sunlight passes through the atmosphere, and most of the sunlight's energy that goes towards warming passes right through the air without warming the air up too much at all. And that is why when we fly on an airplane or we go up through the atmosphere, it gets colder with height. The warmest air is usually found down near the ground. So that's where the sunlight is absorbed, is at the ground. The sunlight is absorbed at the ground. Hi, Kyle from Fargo and Grace. Good to have you on board. What's up, Nathan? Good to see you. Hi, Becca and Lene. Good to have both of you on board. Um, So sunlight comes through the atmosphere, passes through the atmosphere mostly without warming the air, and it hits the ground and it warms up the ground. Okay, so it warms the sand and the soil, and it warms things on the ground, like your lawn, like everything on the ground. Okay, we talked about how different objects on the ground heat up at different rates. Concrete, asphalt, dry sand heat up a lot faster than water. Greetings from Texas. Karen, greetings from Fargo, North Dakota. Glad to have you on board watching. I hope it's warming up in Texas. I saw there was snow in the panhandle of Texas the other day. Matthew, good to have you on board from Fergus Falls. So sunlight comes in, passes through the atmosphere, warms the surface, okay? That's the ground. So the ground warms, and then the ground warms the air closest to the ground. We talked about that in our heat class as well. So air molecules that are touching the ground or right next to the ground warm up the fastest, okay? And the air up a little bit high is too cold. So if we have a thermometer outside, if we put our thermometer too close to the ground, like we lay it on the concrete, well, that's going to show a temperature that's too warm, and it won't really represent the air temperature that we experience outside. Not all of us roll around on the ground all day. Now, if we get our thermometers up too high above the ground, then we'll be measuring air that's a little bit cooler than near the surface. About the perfect height for measuring temperature. Gord, good to have you on board from Michigan. Good, the, uh, the, the state that's shaped like a mitten. Good to have you on board. Montpelier in Stutzman County. Sherry, good to have you on board as well. So wouldn't you say that a good height for measuring the temperature is about the average height of our face, the human uh, person? That's the air that we experience when we step outside. So a good height is between four and six feet off the ground. If we get too low, too much lower, it's gonna be hotter. If we get too much higher, it's gonna read something colder than what we're experiencing. Hi, from Valley City, says Rhonda. Good to have you on board. Did I see a San Antonio? Oh, 75 in San Antonio, but the pollen is insane. Well, I'll tell you what, we'd, we'd like to have a little bit of pollen and tree growth around here in Fargo. It's been pretty barren and cold the last uh, several uh, weeks of our spring. Hey, I see we have a good close to 200 folks on board watching class. I I, I really appreciate each and every one of you uh, joining us for class. So we want to measure the air where we live, and that's about four to six feet off the ground. If we get too much higher, our thermometer will read something too cold. If we get lower, then it'll measure a temperature that is probably going to be way too warm. Okay, so we want to talk a little bit about this. It's a long, a lot of reading here, but Hutch typed out that a thermometer in the sun, if we put our thermometer outside and it's in the sunlight, it'll measure how warm the thermometer can get in the sunshine, and it won't measure the air temperature. Does that make sense? The newborn calves, uh, Cindy says, are sitting on the ground uh, instead of running around because it warms them. That makes sense. My dog Pedro loves to lay in the sun on the ground uh, this time of year. He just loves it. So um, I want to point out, though, that if we stick our thermometer just anywhere outside, then and it's in direct sunlight like this one is, 
then that thermometer is going to absorb some energy from the sunlight and it's going to warm up and give us too warm of a reading. In fact, people that are in direct sunlight will be hotter than people that are in the shade. We've noticed that, right? If you're outside and you're working hard and you are uh, working on the asphalt, maybe you're a construction worker and you're making uh, repairs to the streets, the asphalt is hot. It's like 170 degrees right there down at the asphalt level. And those workers are working right on top of that, okay? That's hot. We don't wanna put a thermometer right over the asphalt. We don't wanna put a thermometer right on the bricks of our house because the bricks of our house warm up in the direct sunlight. You don't wanna put a thermometer anywhere where it's gonna be in direct sun. So getting back to Hutch's fancy pants pictures here, and a thermometer that is positioned in the sunlight is going to tell us the temperature of how warm that thermometer can get when it's sitting in the sun. That's not what we want, okay? On average, it is about 15 degrees warmer in the direct sunlight as opposed to being in the shade. Thanks, jo Joanne, I appreciate the comments. Jill, good to have you on board. All right, let's talk a little bit about where we should put our thermometers. Knowing that the thermometers that are in the direct sunlight will um, get warmer and warm, warm the thermometer, not necessarily measuring the temperature of the air. This is called an instrument shelter, and meteorologists build these shelters. And these shelters do a few things. Number one, the height of the shelter is set at that four to six feet that we talked about, okay? So we can measure the air, not directly in contact with the ground, but a little bit above it. Hi, Calvin in Devil's Lake. Good to have you on board. Thanks for the comments, Carly. I appreciate it. I love what I do. These instrument shelters are painted a specific color. Who can answer why you think that these shelters are painted white? Is that because it will match the, um, the gutters on your house? You want to paint it white? Why do you think that is? Many of you probably know. So I'm waiting for an answer and it takes a bit of time. I know there's a little delay here, so I'm going to continue. So these shelters are painted white for a reason. They're positioned six feet off the ground. Um, and I really appreciate the comments you all are giving me. Thanks, Carly. I, I love what I do. Here is a look. It's painted white because white doesn't absorb. Because it looks cool, Rachel says. <laughs> well, yeah, it does look kind of cool. Uh, and meteorologists are cool, right? <clears throat> okay, Zach, hi in Detroit Lakes. Good to have you on board. Susan, that's right. So it doesn't absorb heat. If we painted these a dark color, dark colors absorb heat a lot, and then the shelter would warm up. And even though we're putting our thermometer inside the shelter in the shade, the, the shelter itself will get warm and, and warm up the air. So yeah, the white will reflect more of the sun's energy as opposed to absorbing it. And it lowers the amount of... of uh, of absorbing of the sun's energy by the wood. We don't want to measure how warm our shelter can get in sun. We want to measure the air, the air temperature in the shade. Here's another thing we do. We provide shade inside for the thermometer, as mentioned. Okay, so there's no direct sunlight on it to warm the thermometer. And another thing, do you notice how these shelters have like vents? Okay, we want the air to be able to freely flow in there. Good job, Cade. That's right. We don't want that uh, shelter to absorb heat. White is a cooler color, Nathan. You're right. Now, if we take a look, we put a fan inside these shelters. And the fan pulls in outside air from a height of about six feet and pulls it through the shelter and pulls fresh air all the time through the shelter over the top of the thermometer, ensuring that you, you are getting fresh air from about six feet off the ground, four to six feet off the ground, that's coming through a shaded area and that thermometer is not warming up because it's absorbing sunlight. The shelter is not warming up because it's absorbing sunlight and we have that fan pulling air in. Now, we also want to position our shelter in a grassy area. Do you notice that? It's not sitting on a concrete parking lot at the mall, okay? We get it away from, from um, buildings that are made of brick or, or wood or anything, and even trees. Trees warm up. So if we can get it away from the trees, we're going to get it away from the trees as well. So 
we want to position a thermometer when we have one in a spot where we're going to measure the temperature of the air. So here's a look at our, uh, our current sky situation in Fargo. We got a lot of sun and it feels awesome outside. And the temperature right now at the airport is 41 degrees. Whoop, Moorhead just jumped up. Did you see that? They warmed up from about 42 to 45 at their airport. So we got a new measurement from Moorhead. They're warming up. I love the 40s. They're better than the 30s. And we're warming up because we have sunshine. We have calm wind, so we're not getting a lot of wind. On my class about pressure last week, excuse me, on Tuesday, we talked about pressure. I had a comment in the comment section. And that comment says, nobody shows whether the pressure's falling or rising. And I says, you know what? That, that was a very good observation because back when I built these graphics back in 2012 um, and I added these features, this wasn't an easy option to add, so I added it. Now you can get that on Valley News Live. And we talked about what, how important it is to know whether the barometric pressure is rising or falling. Right now, it's falling. Falling barometric pressure means it's getting lower and lower, and that might mean that we might get, well, we might see more clouds, maybe even some more snow showers, so we can't rule them out. Hi, Kayla, I love that face. I love the smiley faces. Now, let's see what you can do. Um, here's a look at temperatures across the nation, and I got a response from someone in Texas, and look at that. Now, their 70s in Texas, it's been hotter than that. They, too, got cool. In fact, two days ago, it was snowing here in the panhandle of Texas and in Oklahoma. Today, we looked at the radar. It's snowing like crazy in Omaha. Look at Denver. It's 14 degrees there. That's where Fargo was two days ago. On Hutch's temperature maps, and only on Hutch's temperature maps, you see this white line. Okay, So if you watch Valley News Live, Hutch doesn't just put pretty colors on there for a reason. As a scientist, I want to know where the freezing line is, and that white line is the freezing line. And now you students know it. You know what to look for. That's the freezing line. It'll be going away for good for a while. We're not going to see the freezing line at all on the temperature map so once we get out of spring and summer arrives. But for now, it's a real important thing to know. And all of these temperatures are being measured from instrument shelters, that are positioned not on asphalt parking lots, not next to brick buildings. So what can you do? You can do this. You can take a thermometer. Now this one is a, a $3 special. It's not an expensive thermometer. So I don't expect super accurate readings from this thermometer when I put it outside. You know, this thermometer is good to give us a general idea of where the, what the temperature is. But if you buy a thermometer, even if it's an inexpensive one like this, I think this thing was, oh, maybe $5 or something. Now, um, you can hang this outside, but if you hang this on your house and your house gets heated by the sun, okay, you're going to measure the temperature of how hot this thermometer and the wall of the house can be in the sunlight. Okay, If you hang it on a tree out in the yard, if that tree is in the shade and it's a big canopy tree, it probably isn't going to uh, affect the reading that much, and it's probably a better place than hanging it on the side of the house. But this time of year, when there's no leaves or shade on the tree branches at all, that tree gets heated up a lot faster than the air does because the, the core, the trunk of the tree is absorbing sunlight. So you like to position this out in the yard, away from your house, get away from the, the driveway, get away in the grassy part of the yard. Maybe a fence post, but the fence also absorbs heat. Just keep in mind that wherever you put your thermometer, you want to try to get it in the shade over a grassy area and about six feet off the ground. And that'll give you a more accurate thermometer reading of what's going on out there. If you buy a fancy pants electronic thermometer like some of our weather kids get, sponsored by our friends over at Luther Family Ford, they also sponsor my class here. So. Stop in, send them an email, tell them thank you. I appreciate Luther Family Ford for doing this. I'll tell you what, for the weather kids that come through, they get a electronic weather station. And there is a sensor unit that you place outside. You want to put that in the shade. And you want to keep it up off the ground so it's not measuring the temperature of how warm the ground can get or how cold the ground can get. But you're measuring the temperature of the air at the average height of a human person walking outside, four to six feet. 
Some of you kids are not four to six feet tall yet, but many of you are. Okay, I'm open for some questions, so I'm going to watch for them to come in. I'm also open for suggestions. We're going to continue the class next week. You'll see a graphic and ads uh, on our station about what the topics are, but I'll let you know right now. Tuesday is going to be another fun day. We're going to take a tour of Hutch's home studio, the little setup that I have to broadcast weather from my home. So you'll get to see that. That's next Tuesday, and we'll talk a little bit, answer questions, and we'll have some fun because I expect a lot funner weather next week. Is funner a word? Well, in Hutch's class today, we'll let that slide. Thank you, Kristen, Christina, for your comments. I appreciate the class. I hope that uh, you are getting something out of them. I'm looking for questions here now as they come in, so let me see if I can... Uh... Well, thank you, guys. Your, your comments are very, very awesome. I appreciate that. Remember, please... Um, at the top of this class today, you can go to the Valley News Live page and you can click on my name, Hutch VNL. I left that on the top of the class and go like my page. I'd appreciate that as well. Um, I'll probably be doing some more Facebook Lives from my Facebook page so that it's not always on the v VNL page because sometimes we have breaking news live feeds on here as well. So sometimes you'll see Hutch doing some stuff over there. So don't miss that. Hutch VNL, like that page as well. Carla, thank you. Rolog, very good. Hopefully everything's better so we can get to that Steam Threshers Union uh, uh, in Rolog, Minnesota in the fall. And uh, we can all get out and, and say hi to Rolog. Um, how many light years is the sun away? Wow, Kimberly, that's a good question. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the correct answer. Light years. What is a light year? Well, that is how far light can travel in one year's time. So the sun is not, it doesn't take the light from the sun a year to get to the earth. It only takes a couple of days. So uh, light years between sun and earth. You know, I use Google a lot to answer questions like that because I like to make sure it's right. It's a very, very small number. It, like I said, the light year is how far light can travel in one year. And light travels super duper fast, faster than I can, than I can do that. So the distance between the sun and the earth on average, because the sun and the earth have differing uh, distances depending on what time of the year it is, because the earth's orbit around the sun is egg-shaped, it's oblong, it's not a perfect circle, is point zero zero. 0016. That's point four zeros, one six. Really, really tiny amount of light years away from the sun. So that's good. Uh, thank you guys very much. Your, your questions are fun. Let me see if I can find another one. Um, do you guys have a good setup for your thermometer? Why do you think that um, if you're listening to a radio station, or you're watching Hutch on TV and you see that we put up this graphic and this graphic shows a temperature in Fargo of 41 and you look outside on your thermometer hanging by your tree and it says that it's 50. Okay, well, Hutch, is Hutch lying to you that the temperature really isn't 41 in Fargo, but it's 50? Do you know now why there might be a difference in what your thermometer is reading versus what Hutch is saying on TV? I hope so. Because if your thermometer is hanging outside, you're going to get a different reading than what I'm showing you. The numbers that I'm showing you on that map are coming from the National Weather Service instruments that are at the airport, at Hector International Airport, in a grassy field away from the runways. And that's where we measure the temperature. And it's on the north side of town. Okay, So... Um, it's not in the center part of the city. It's going to be warmer on any thermometer on many days in the central part of the city where there's a lot of concrete and asphalt and buildings that are made of brick that heat up and heat the air. Okay, That's called a heat island effect that a city can have. Okay, You guys have great questions, and I'll try to get to them all. Uh... Oh, Hey, David Burroughs, good to see you. I hope you are well. I hope all of you are staying well. Let me show you something. Um, I'm going to pull up uh, on the uh, 
the monitor here, uh, a Valley News Live's website. So I want you to be able to see this. If you, okay, the top story is Minnesota tornado drill. Okay, uh, uh, tornado drills will be held Thursday in Minnesota as part of the state's Severe Weather Awareness Week. Wow, Severe Weather Awareness Week. Tornado drill time in Minnesota. So that's, uh, that's happening. Um, it's important to know what you're going to do in case of a tornado. We had a class on that. At, a, at the Valley News Live weather page, you can watch these classes. If you want to share them with friends or classmates, or maybe even email it to your teacher to show them what, what kind of science you've been learning with Hutch, click on the weather tab up here at the top. Okay, And if you click on the weather button, it'll load the weather page. And right up here, in blue, this button here, it says Hutch's Weather Class. You can click right there. And if you click on Hutch's Weather Class, you're going to get a window pop up. And the most recent class will show up. Today's isn't on there yet. This is me wearing a blue shirt from uh, the other day. Okay. And you see this little menu right up here? It says 1 slash 10. There's 10 classes on there. You can click on this button and scroll through. Pick which class you want to watch. And they are all loaded up on our website. I've gotten a lot of requests about hurricanes, so that is an awesome topic to talk about when, when we're talking about meteorology. I totally agree with you. Uh, maybe sometime we will do a class on hurricanes. I think hurricanes are very interesting. Um, who can answer for me why we don't see hurricanes here in North Dakota? Uh-oh, Wendell says he heard that I can play guitar as a weather forecast. Oh, can I play the weather? Can I play the guitar as a weather forecast? I can play the guitar. I am not good at playing and singing at the same time. It's kind of like walking and chewing gum at the same time can be hard for some folks. For me, playing a guitar while singing, bad news. But I can play the guitar while I keep quiet and just play, and it's a lot of fun. I get a lot of requests about... Um, uh, hurricanes. Hey, uh, Kayla, I think it is, says that we don't have money hurricanes around here because we are inland. Yeah, we're a long ways from an ocean and oceans, warm ones, are where hurricanes form. So that is exactly right, you guys. So we don't see hurricanes up here, although we can have blizzards and winter storms. Uh, and sometimes we can have uh, storms in the summer where the pressure in those storms drops so much, it's equivalent to sometimes weaker or moderate uh, strength hurricanes. We've had very, very strong winter storms up here uh, before. You guys are great. So I'll look over the questions that you leave here. I want to thank you very much for all of your comments, your likes. I appreciate your likes on Hutch's page. So go to the top of this Facebook post and you'll see a Hutch VNL button. That Hutch VNL, if you just click on my name, will take you to my page. I'd love it if you liked or followed my page as well. I'm posting a lot of weather stuff there too, uh, as well as on the Valley News Live page. You guys are great. Thanks for joining. I have fun every time I do this. We will see you tonight on Valley News Live, and we'll see you next week for some more fun weather classes. Until then, goodbye.